So while ArcGIS Online does not have a lot of the raster analysis tools that you would expect to find in a desktop GIS, what it can do is a very good job of displaying elevation and terrain. And this is probably my tenth take on this video because every time I do this I find something completely awesome, I get distracted, and then I have to restart because I'm down some rabbit hole. So this is the one. So this is Katahdin, of course, and what I want you to notice is as you zoom in, we are looking at different resolutions of data sets. And what we're actually looking at is the 2017 LiDAR flight. So we have one meter resolution elevation data for everywhere that we would have it in the state of Maine on our desktop software. So you've been accessing this through the student materials drive because I've got this elevation model on our server. But this is accessing it online. You don't have to have it saved anywhere on your computer, which is great great because it's a lot of gigabytes. So how to create this? I'm going to close here and I'm going to make a new map to show you how to add elevation and hillshade from scratch. So both of these are accessed through the add data search for layers. And I need to go to where it says my content. ArcGIS Online. And I want to add two data sets. One is terrain, multi directional hill shape, and the other is just simply terrain. So I'm going to hit the plus to add and the plus to add. And then I'm going to hit the back button here and then go to the contents. So now I have the terrain, multi directional hill shade over the terrain. I want that to change. I want this under that. These three dots and move down. So you can't click and drag like you would in regular desktop, but you can do that. So I don't want it to display all black. That default color ramp doesn't work for me. So I'm going to go to more options and image display. And I'm going to say symbology type stretch, keep that. Stretch type, minimum and maximum. And then I'm going to tell it uh, that lets me have the option of a color ramp. And I'm going to click that drop down and scroll down until I see the elevation number one ramp that I like and hit apply. And there it is. Now the thing I want you to notice is that I'm right now as I zoom in and out the color ramp doesn't change. This elevation is what it is and it stays red no matter what. But if I check this box that says dynamic range adjustment, whatever the highest value is gets this high value, and whatever the lowest value within this view is gets the low. So apply, and there it is. As I zoom out, some higher elevation areas are now within this view, and some lower, lower elevation areas are now within that view. If I zoom in again on here, now the highest elevation is here and the lowest is here. So I like that because it normalizes everything to what is actually in view. And again, getting distracted, this looks awesome, no distraction. So apply, close. And now I want to be able to see the hill shade underneath that. So I'm going to hit the three dots and go to transparency. And that allows me to set the transparency to, I'll make it 50%. As a final step, I'm going to hit the three dots under the multi-directional hill shade, and I'm going to go to image display. And I'm going to change the stretch type to minimum maximum, and that allows me to change the gamma. So as I move that down, you'll see that the hill shade effect becomes more intense. If I moved it all the way up, a lot less intense. All the way to zero, or 0.1, it gets ridiculous. So I'm just going to adjust that until I like it. And I think right about 0.5 should do it. So again, I've left the dynamic range adjustment on for the elevation itself. So as I move around, those values change. And this is just massively interesting to me how 
this is displaying elevation. I can get distracted looking at elevation models very quickly. And I encourage you to do the same because you learn a lot about the world around you. So for our region, so right now the edge of the Rocky Mountains is just in view, which makes all of our elevations look tiny. We zoom in just a little bit, and now we've renormalized. So we can see Katahdin here, the White Mountains, Mount Washington, this plateau up in Quebec, this, I think this is an impact crater from a meteor that has become a lake, one of the places I'd like to go someday. But again, we zoom in here, and we renormalize. And now we're looking at the LiDAR data again. Very high resolution. Looks great. So that's how you add in the digital elevation model and hillshade to ArcGIS Online.